वेलकम टू लेट्स लर्न स्मार्ट बाय डॉक्टर डिजिटल कॉलेज इट इज डॉक्टर राशिद हाशमी फॉर द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ दिस पेपर हेयर वी आर हैविंग अ सीरीज ऑफ लेट्स सॉल्व पास पेपर्स एंड एट दिस टाइम कैम्ब्रिज असेसमेंट इंटरनेशनल एग्जामिनेशन बायोलॉजी पेपर फाइव जीरो नाइन जीरो फॉर विंटर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वेरियंट वन टू इज बींग एक्सप्लेन you know that for this paper there is one r to solve this is a type of multiple choice question and for this we might be using more time because here for the explanation of the paper we are not only solving the correct answers but we'll be explaining that why is some answer wrong so let's see in this question if you see the diagram shows part of the plant cell which part controls the entry of the substances into the cell you know that d is the cell wall so it will not be controlling it is fully permeable while c is the cell membrane and cell membrane will be controlling the entry and exit of materials into the cytoplasm so answer for this question should be c while a is the chloroplast and it is not controlling something into the cell okay similarly b is the vacuole and vacuole is also not controlling for the entry and exit of materials into the cells okay in this question which statement about the diffusion are correct molecules move at random yes molecules are moving at random in the diffusion because they are moving by brownian movement molecules move down the concentration gradient yes they are moving from higher concentration to the lower concentration molecules may move through a partially permeable membrane yes diffusion can occur through a partially permeable membrane or without any partially permeable membrane partially permeable membrane so 1 2 and 3 all are correct so the answer for this question should be a in this question an experiment measured the rate at which plant takes up magnesium ions from solution one plant was given a poison that stop respiration another plant was left as normal the graph shows the results if you look at this graph that on x axis this is the concentration of the magnesium ions in the solution while on x axis the rate of uptake of the magnesium ions is there you know that for this n plant the uptake of magnesium ions is independent of the concentration gradient means even if there is the minimum concentration gradient even then movement is there okay but by increasing the concentration concentration of magnesium ions in the solution its rate is increasing on the other hand p is depending upon the concentration gradient so at uh, from this point to this point there is no uptake of the magnesium ions because concentration is being increased but still there is no gradient from higher concentration to lower concentration it means that the magnesium ions in the solution are still less than in cytoplasm so after this point the concentration of magnesium ions in the solution has increased that's why the uptake of magnesium ions has increased so uh, we can consider that p is the diffusion process while n is the active transport process how are the magnesium ions being absorbed by the plants at point n and at point p you know that at point p this is where there is no concentration gradient okay because this plant is the normal it is not given any uh, n plant is the one which is provided with the uh, uh, this is the normal one while p is the plant which was provided which was given the poison so without poison only active transport uh, can come okay and if poison will be there active transport cannot occur so p cannot do active transport only n can do active transport one reason because it is without poison another The, it is uh, absorbing the magnesium ions without concentration gradient so n point is active transport active transport a and b both can be correct while by p even there is no respiration because of the poison no atp is being produced the, even then there is uptake and the uptake is dependent on concentration gradient so this is diffusion so the answer for this question should be b not a 
In this question, starch digestion occurs in the mouth cavity and in the duodenum, but it stops in the stomach. Why is this? So it is very clear that in duodenum and in the mouth cavity, the pH is suitable for the working of amylase for the digestion of starch. In stomach, you know that there is very high acidic conditions. So uh, we can say the um, all the starch has been digested before it reaches the stomach. We don't know about it. Okay, no information is given in the question about it. Cells in the stomach do not produce amylase. More similarly, this information is not given in this question, although this might be true. pH in the stomach changes the shape of the amylase. Yes, this is true that pH is acidic in the stomach, so it will change the shape of the amylase and starch cannot be digested. Temperature in the stomach is too high for amylase to work. No, temperature in the core region of the body is almost same whether it is stomach or the duodenum or whatever. So the answer should be C for this question. In this question, which part of the leaf absorbs and uses carbon dioxide from the air? Uh, you know that use of carbon dioxide is by photosynthetic cells. So the photosynthetic cells is the mesophilus cell. Cuticle is not cellular. Xylem and phloem, they are the dead cells. Okay, so only mesophilus cells, they can, absor uh, they can absorb carbon dioxide and they can use in the leaf. In this question, how do carbon dioxide and water enter the leaf? You know that in living systems, gases are always diffusing. Okay, they are not taken up by the active transport. So A and B can be correct. For the gases, we never use the term osmosis. Osmosis is a term only used for water. Okay, and the water enters a leaf. It is by active transport or the transpirational pull. Water is such a molecule, uh, such a chemical which is moving into and out of the cells at maximum as compared to any other chemical. The most movement is that for water. So water is never taken into the cell or out of the cell by active transport. So this is wrong. Transpirational pull, that is okay because water is evaporating, it is transpiring from the leaves. So water will enter into the leaves because of transpirational pull. So answer A is correct for this question. In this question, the graph shows how the rate of photosynthesis varies with highlight intensity at two different temperatures. Other variables are kept same. Okay, when light intensity is increasing, the rate of photosynthesis is increasing. Okay, in which section of the graph is light intensity limiting the rate of photosynthesis? You know that we are defining the limiting factor, the one whose deficiency limits the rate of reaction. Or you could say a factor which directly affects the rate of reaction is called the limiting factor. Okay, so for graph uh, this 15 degrees Celsius in this region when by increasing the light intensity rate of photosynthesis is increasing or by decreasing the light intensity rate of photosynthesis is decreasing light intensity is acting as the limiting factor and at 25 degrees Celsius at this point when light intensity is increased or it is decreased rate of photosynthesis is increased in the region P and R when we are increasing light intensity or decreasing light intensity, rate of photosynthesis is not affected. It remains the same. So for S region and for Q region, light intensity is directly affecting the rate of photosynthesis. So it is acting as the limiting uh, factor. So Q and S both should be the answers. So B is the answer where Q and S are the correct options. In this question, what are the substrates and the end products for the amylase and the lipase? You know that amylase is for the digestion of starch while lipase is for the digestion of fats and oils, the lipids. So for amylase, the substrate should be starch. So C and D are correct. B and A, they are wrong. Okay, and the product of the amylase and the starch is maltose. That is true. That is true. 
okay but you know the lipase is not for the digestion of protein this is for the digestion of fats so d option is wrong fat is correct and when fats are digested fatty acids and the glycerols they are produced so answer should be c for this question in this question what is the main function of the villi in uh, the ileum you know that a villi are for the absorption of digested food so for the digestion uh, absorption of the digested food we need a high surface area so to increase the surface area for the absorption that must be the function of the villus or the villi so answer should be a the other options are wrong to move digested food along the intestine by peristalsis no this is the job of uh, longitudinal and circular muscles in alimentary canal to produce mucus so that materials can move smoothly producing mucus is not the function of villi this is the function of glands intestinal glands to secrete amylase to digest starch in the food once again this is the function of uh, intestinal gland this is not the function of villi so only option correct option is a for this question in this question the symptoms of a disease include weakness fatigue aching swollen joints and the swollen and soft gums okay bleeding and swollen gums can tell you that this is because of uh, vitamin c deficiency these are uh, the signs and symptoms of vitamin c deficiency so which food is used to treat this disease liver as a source of iron no simply this is not uh, the anemic conditions when swollen gums are not uh, there swollen gums are there this is not the deficiency of iron milk as a source of calcium because there are also soft tissues damaged there is not only the problem of uh, bones but there is also soft tissues problem oily fish as a source of vitamin d that can be correct but if soft tissues are not damaged because vitamin d deficiency can cause the weak bones or soft bones but here the joints are swollen swollen joints are basically by the inflammation of uh, the soft tissues at the ends of the joints okay similarly fatigue is there when oxygen is not properly uh, being provided and vitamin c is used for the absorption as well as utilization of iron if vitamin c is sufficiently present iron will be absorbed iron will be used and the iron is needed for hemoglobin myoglobin and they are needed for oxygen transport oxygen is needed for respiration to produce energy so vitamin c deficiency will ultimately cause fatigue and the weakness or the aching but the major sign and is swollen and soft gums so oranges as a source of vitamin c should be the answer for this question now in this question the diagram shows transfer section of a dicotyledonous root and the stem you know that this is the root because central region is that of star shaped xylem while k is the phloem this is for the stem the in interior ones are the xylem and this is the phloem one which tissues transport sugars you know that transport of the sugars is the job of phloem so k is the phloem and uh, m is the phloem so k and m should be the answer so a is the answer for this question in this question the diagram shows a cut plant shoot in a container of water what will stop the movement of water up this stem a fall in humidity of the air you know that in this question uh, there is no humidity change is shown uh, and moreover if the humidity will fall the movement of the water through the stem should not stop rather it should be even more because dry air will transpire more water so more water will be moving through the stem so a is wrong a rise in the air temperature once again if the temperature will rise at this uh, in this area in the outer atmosphere more evaporation will occur and because of more evaporation more transpiration will occur and water will pass through the stem more quickly a blockage in the xylem yes there can be blockage means even if all the conditions are good for more transpiration if the xylem is blocked then movement through the uh, stem will be blocked an insect sucking sugar from the phloem 
might be if the uh, insect is sucking sugar but from the phloem it will not be affecting the xylem and for the movement of water through the stem xylem is mainly responsible so the most suitable answer for this question should be c that a blockage in the xylem in this question which path uh, way does oxygenated blood follow in the human body okay pulmonary artery you know pulmonary artery is taking deoxygenated blood from heart to the lungs so left and the right atrium uh, pulmonary artery is not going into the right and the left atrium so this is wrong okay pulmonary vein is pulmonary artery once again it is going into the left atrium artery is not pulmonary artery is not going into the left atrium this is wrong pulmonary vein left and the right atria pulmonary vein is bringing oxygenated blood but it's not going into both of the atria it is going only into the left atrium not into the right atrium this is wrong so this option is wrong pulmonary vein brings oxygenated blood from the lungs it enters into the left atrium and blood goes into the left ventricle from left atrium and then it is pumped towards the body through aorta so that is true so answer for this question should be d in this question the graph shows a person's pulse rate over a period of time during which they rest pedal and exercise bike and then uh, rest again okay at which point did the person stop paddling you know that when a pulse rate is increasing mean the person is paddling and when the pulse rate high pulse rate is maintained means the person is paddling at a constant rate and when the pulse rate is dropping it means the person has stopped paddling okay and the constant pulse rate the lower constant pulse rate can also be there at rest means between c and d this is the rest time and this is increase this is the paddling time okay and this is constant paddling time while well, this is the point where the person has stopped paddling that's why the pulse rate is decreasing so answer for this question should be b which row shows blood pressures in an artery a capillary and a vein so if we know about this graph that the blood pressure is continuously moving from aorta towards vena cava it is in such a way that it is continuously decreasing like this it's not getting to zero but it's continuously decreasing so artery should have the highest blood pressure 13 13 and the capillary should have intermediate and the veins should have the least so 0.6 should be in the vein and 4 kilopascal should be there in the artery so the answer should be d for this question in this question anaerobic respiration takes place when there is a lack of which uh, substance you know that anaerobic respiration is because of oxygen deficiency so uh, carbon dioxide deficiency is out of question glucose deficiency it will stop both aerobic and anaerobic respiration and the deficiency of lactic acid this is the product of anaerobic respiration so this is out of question so only d should be the answer that the deficiency of oxygen will result in the start of anaerobic respiration in this question the apparatus shown is used to make alcohol by anaerobic respiration when the word alcohol is coming in any question in your mind yeast should come quickly so what are p q and r organism p so what should be the organism p p cannot be the virus it cannot be the bacterium it enzyme is not an organism this is a chemical so fungus yeast is a fungus that is true so solution q it cannot be starch amino acid or sucrose so it can be glucose because amino acids are not producing alcohol digestion of starch is very difficult okay and sucrose can be digested but not by the viruses okay and the gas q is carbon dioxide because by anaerobic respiration 
C6 H12 O6 that is 2 C2 H5 O H plus 2 CO2. So this is the ethanol or alcohol and this is carbon dioxide. This is anaerobic respiration being done in microbes. So answer for this question should be C. The diagram shows the rib cage and some of the muscles involved in breathing as seen from the side. What happens when the intercostal muscles shown in the diagram contract? You know that the muscles, they are, the position of these intercostal muscles is in such a way that they will contract in this direction. Okay, in this direction, they will come close to each other. So the ribs will move towards each other like this. If they were like this, if the muscles were like this, then by the contraction, ribs can move away from each other. So the answer for this question should be the diagram moves uh, the diaphragm moves down it can move the movement of the diaphragm is there when the ribs are moving but this is not told in this question so we are not confirmed about it the lungs inflate if the ribs, the ribs will come close to each other the pressure inside the lungs will uh, increase and the lungs will be emptied they will not be filled with the air so this inflation is wrong one okay uh, the pressure inside the lungs decreases no when the ribs will come close to each other pressure inside the lungs will rather increase so this is also wrong the ribs move downward yes the ribs will move downward when the muscles are contracting they will bring the ribs towards each other so this should be correct the answer for this question should be d okay moreover we know that uh, when the ribs are coming close to each other and the ribs move downward pressure on the lungs is increased air is rushed out from the lungs and at the same time the diaphragm becomes doom shaped the diaphragm will not move down so this is also wrong so the answer for this question is d in this question the diagram shows a dialysis machine which substance would not be present in a sample of the dialysis fluid taken from point X. You know that this is point X. This is here dialysis being given, dialysate or the dialysis fluid is being given in. After exchange of materials with the blood over here, this is going out and the waste materials are taken out. So glucose molecules, there can be glucose molecules because we have to add glucose in the dialysis fluid so that glucose from the blood is not taken out so glucose must be present here salt oils yes we have to remove the salt oils from uh, our blood so that's why there are less salts in the dialysate at entry point there are more salts in the dialysis fluid at its exit point plasma proteins yes plasma proteins are very big in size they cannot cup, uh, come out of this dialysis tubing through these dialysis tubing they are partially permeable and through them plasma proteins cannot come out they act just like human capillaries urea molecules yes we have to take out the urea molecules so there will be more urea at exit point than at at entry point of the dialysis fluid so this is wrong this is wrong and this is wrong so the answer should be only c because plasma proteins cannot be present in the dialysis fluid so the answer for this question is c in this question which part of the skin has a major role in insulating the human body blood vessels fatty tissues hair follicles and the sweat glands you know that fats are the bad conductors of the heat so they act as the insulators so answer for this question should be b what describes a reflex action it is a rapid response to a stimulus involving the spinal cord yeah apparently this is correct for any stimulus when it's a rapid response and spinal cord is involved this can be a reflex action sometime other than spinal cord it can be uh, the brain it is a rapid response detected by the motor neurons response is not detected by motor neurons so this is wrong it is a slow response so this is wrong slow response is not there this is slow response this is not true so only answer for this question should be a okay 
In this question, a person looks at some hills far away. So as soon as this word far away comes in any question, you should come to know that uh, mm, the uh, site will be uh, far away site. Means which row shows the state of the lenses, ciliary muscles and the suspensory ligament in her eyes. You know that uh, for the distance observations, we need thick lens. We do not need thin lens. So thick lens is not needed. Uh, thick lens is not needed. This is not. This is not. So C can be true. D can be true. Uh, contracted ciliary muscles. So you know that for uh, distance observation we need thin lens and for the thin lens ciliary muscles relax. They are not contracted. So C is wrong. D can be the correct one. And the suspensory ligaments will be under tension. Yes, when the ciliary muscles will relax, the suspensory ligaments, they will stretch outward and they will be taut. So answer for this question should be D because uh, this is accommodation. In this question, what is the sign of diabetes mellitus? You know that in diabetes mellitus, glucose is coming along with the urine. This is the basic sign of the diabetes mellitus. Glucose is always present in the blood. This cannot be the sign. Insulin in the blood. Insulin is always present in the blood. And insulin in the urine. This can be present because whenever insulin is produced, extra of it is excreted out. So this cannot be the answer. Answer can be glucose. In normal healthy person, there is no glucose present in the urine. In a patient of diabetes mellitus, glucose is present in the urine. In this question, the diagram shows the bones of the forelimb. Which labels show where the muscles that straighten the hinge joint is attached? they are asking that the hinge joint have to move in this direction so to bring this uh, uh, away the extension is needed so for the extension uh, thing there should be the extensor muscle present over here at this point okay so the extensor muscle must be there between point 1 and point 2 so answer sh for this question should be a in this question, which of these diseases can be treated effectively by the antibiotics? You know that antibiotics for, they are for bacterial diseases. So HIV is the viral disease, malaria is the disease of a unicellular organism, plasmodium, while syphilis is by uh, treponema pallidum that is a bacterium this is called so syphilis can be treated only with the antibiotics so answer for this question should be D the table shows uh, the characteristics of four microorganisms which one could be a virus contains one or more cell you know that viruses are not cellular so this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong the only option is a because no cells should be there contains one or more nuclei no then viruses there are no nuclei present they produce spores no viruses are not producing spores spores producing is the main characteristic of fungi so the answer for this question should be a a fermenter is used to produce penicillin. Why is continuous stirring necessary during the process of fermentation? To keep the penicillium in contact with the fresh oxygen and nutrients. Yes, we know that during the process of fermentation, uh, the penicillium is clumped up. So we are continuously stirring so that oxygen is equally mixed and the nutrients are available to all penicillium uh, organism so answer a is most appropriate to move the penicillium to the bottom of the fermenter no stirring is not needed to move them to the bottom. stirring is for mixing so b is wrong to move the penicillium to the top of the fermenter this is just opposite to b so this is also wrong to stop the penicillium reacting with the wall of the fermenter no for uh, for this purpose we should have inert walls of the fermenter we do not need any stirring process for this so the only option and the correct answer for this question is a which statement describes the relationship in ecosystem 
carbohydrates are passed from decomposers to producers no decomposers are producing carbon dioxide water and some mineral salts so they are not going to producers energy is passed from carnivores to herbivores no this is at higher trophic level this is at lower trophic level energy is not moving from higher trophic level to lower trophic level so a is wrong b is wrong proteins are passed from primary consumers to producers once again primary consumers are at higher trophic level producers are at lower trophic level proteins can move from here to here but not from here to here just like this uh, energy can move from herbivores to carnivores but not from carnivores to herbivores okay so c is also wrong carbohydrates are passed from producers to herbivores yes producers are at lower trophic level and herbivores are at higher trophic levels this is trophic level 1 this is trophic level 2 so this is correct answers answer for this question should be d In this question the diagram shows a food web of the organisms found in the pond which organism is both a herbivore and a carnivore herbivore is the one which is feeding on the green plants and the carnivore which is feeding on uh, the animals or the herbivores so if you look at the mosquito larvae they are feeding on algae so they are the herbivores and the mosquito larvae they are also eating this microorganism uh, the small animals paramecium paramecium is the unicellular animals present in the water which are eating algae so mosquito are also eating paramecium so two trophic levels can be assigned to the mosquito larvae this says at trophic level 2 and this is at trophic level 3 herbivore as well as carnivore so the answer for this question is mosquito larvae algae is not a herbivore not a carnivore so this is wrong dragonfly if you look at the dragonfly this is not the herbivore because it's not feeding any green plants similarly paramecium is only the herbivore it's not eating anything else so this is not the answer so this is also wrong so the only answer for this question is c In this question the diagram shows the nitrogen cycle which stage is carried by the nitrifying bacteria the nitrifying bacteria will be doing nitrification the nitrification is ammonia and ammonium ions they are changed into nitrites and nitrites are changed into the nitrates this is this process is called nitrification and this is done by the nitrifying bacteria so here if you look at ammonium compounds in the soil they are changed into the nitrates in the soil this is the nitrification process and that is done by nitrifying bacteria uh, nitrogen in the air is nitrogen compound in the plants this is nitrogen fixation so this cannot be done by the nitrifying bacteria so d is the wrong answer this is nitrates in the soil they are going into the atmosphere this is denitrification process so this c is the wrong answer similarly nitrogen compounds in the dead matter they are going they are being changed into ammonium compounds in the soil so this is ammonification or the petrification this is not nitrification so this is also wrong so the only answer for this question is b In this question three statements about malarial parasites are listed. Okay? Insecticides are used to kill the vectors. Yeah, we know about it. Netting is used to keep the vectors away from the people. Yes, we are using mosquito nets. People take drugs that stop the malarial pathogen developing. Yeah, malaria is treated by the anti-malarial drugs. Which methods can be used to control malaria? this can be used this can be used and this can be used by all these methods we can control malaria so answer for this question should be a in this question what would be an undesirable feature in an insecticide it becomes more concentrated at each stage in the food web yeah this happens but we don't want this the desirable characteristic in the insecticides is that it should be very effective in killing the insects but it should not become the part of the food web so this is undesirable characteristic in 
uh, insecticide while in case of b it breaks down within a few months yeah this is desirable we want it biodegradable this is not undesirable character this is the desirable character it destroys one particular insect only yes we produce specific insecticides so this is the desirable character it destroy uh, it destroys the immature forms of an insect yes this is also the desirable character we want to kill the nymphs and larvae of insects so all b c d are the desirable characters only a is not the desirable character so the answer for this question is a in this question the diagram shows a flower cut in half okay which two parts of the flower produces haploid gametes you know that haploid gametes are produced by the gonads the gonad is this anther and the ovule inside the ovary so four and two they are producing the haploid gametes by meiosis so two and four c option is true for this a is not a gonad this is a stigma this three is the style so both of them they are only doing mitosis they are not doing meiosis so they cannot produce haploid gametes haploid gametes can be produced only by these two gonads of the plant flower the diagram in this question the diagram shows a section through a non endospermic seed so this is the cotyledon when it is saying non endospermic seed so this number 1 is the cotyledon which structures develop into the adult plant adult plant will be this is plumule this will form the future shoot while this is the radical this will be producing future root so 2 and 3 should be the answer so answer for this question is c in this question which row describes a cause a symptom and a treatment for the syphilis in males you know that syphilis is caused by bacteria this is not caused by the viruses so c and d are wrong a and b are correct symptoms development of the painful joints and the severe headache both can be there in any case but you know that the syphilis bacterial disease is treated by the antibiotics not by the antibodies we are not so much advanced that we have developed the antibodies for the treatment of the uh treponema pallidum we are using antibiotics so a is correct b is wrong so the most appropriate answer for this question should be a okay in this question the diagram shows the changes in the thickness of the uterus lining during one menstrual cycle so you can see the thickness of the uterine lining is, is decreasing so during this it is the menstruation period okay menses are occurring and after this um, this is maturing uh, means uh, follicle is maturing ovum is being developed uterus is becoming thick on the day of uh, 12 13 14 15 this is the time of ovulation okay and even after ovulation uterus is thickened until there is next menses or the periods started after just after day 28 Okay now the question is when would the levels of the progesterone and LH be the highest you know that LH the luteinizing hormone will be highest when ovulation will occur so the ovulation will be occurring on average on the day 14 so b can be the correct one LH cannot be high on day 5 or on day uh, 13 okay it can be on day 13 but not on day 15 so this is wrong between day 12 and 16 that can also be uh, as a variation lh can be sorry we were talking about lh lh concentration cannot be high between 25 and 28 because at this time lh is decreasing that's why menses will start similarly lh cannot be high between 1 and 5 because menses are occurring on day 10 this is just after the periods this time period this is not the time of ovulation so on day 14 this can be high and if we talk about the progesterone progesterone is concentration of the progesterone increases after lh secretion of lh so it cannot be before lh that is on 12 and 15 this cannot be there 
on day 5 it cannot be there on day 13 if lh is highest on 14 progesterone cannot be high at on 13 so progesterone concentration can be high on 19 to day 23 after the high concentration of LH. So the answer for this question can be B. Okay. So B, A and C, they are wrong. Okay. In this question, in a species of the mouse, four co fur color can be black or the white. Two black female mice were allowed to mate with the same black male. So uh, this is black black this is female this is male okay this is uh, one this is one okay this is female and this is male okay i'm signing it the same black male like this okay one female had nine youngs all of which were black so for example they are having nine black okay the other female had seven young five black and two white five are the black and the two are white in this case okay now this is the overall information given in this question one of these white mice was male and is allowed to mate with the heterozygous female heterozygous female will be uh, capital b small b or capital w small w this will be the heterozygous okay Okay, what is the expected ratio of the phenotype of their offsprings? You know that if both the parents are black and the white individual is produced, that white individual can be small b, small b or it can be capital B, small b. It can be, no, if the b is dominant, uh, this white individual will be cap small b, small b. One of these white mice was male and is allowed to mate with the heterozygous female. So this is the white male and it is allowed to mate with this one, heterozygous female. So this is heterozygous female, it is mated with this one. So what should be the result? The result of strings should be capital B small b and small b small b. They should be there in 1 is to 1 ratio. This is just like that of the back cross or the test cross. Okay. So according to this we will say that one black to one white should be the result for this one. Okay. Three white cannot be there because white is recessive in this condition. Okay, and three black cannot be there because this can occur only when both the parents are heterozygous. Okay, and one black, two gray, one white can be there only if there is co-dominance. Here in this case, black is dominant over white. Okay, in a species of the mouse, fur color can be black or white. Only two fur colors are there. It means there is no co-dominance. So gray cannot be there. So C is wrong. Okay, when both black are mated with each other, all the offsprings are black, it means black is dominant over white. So this information, this piece of information tells you that black is dominant over white. So for the test cross, whereby one is heterozygous, one is homozygous, the offsprings phenotype should be one is to one. So this is wrong, this is wrong, only A can be the answer for this question. Okay, in this question, the diagram shows the blood groups phenotypes of some members of a family which member of the F1 generation must be heterozygous with the co-dominant allele. Okay, this is the F1 generation. Okay, and can be heterozygous with the co-dominant allele. Co-dominant allele in case of blood group, they are A and B. Okay, okay, now if you look at this, in F1 generation, A is mated with the B and the blood group A and B both are produced. But in this case, blood, the individual A must be IO, IO because his or her parents are both of blood group B, uh, blood group O. So the blood genotype of the, for the blood group for individual A must be IO, IO. Okay. And if 
the, there are two offsprings with blood group A and B, this individual must be having IA and IB. So that one IB is coming to this individual and IA is coming to this individual and while the other parent is giving only IO and IO. So the two blood groups are being formed. So the heterozygous individual with codominant allele must be this female. Okay, so the answer for this question should be B. Okay, in this question, which human characteristics shows discontinuous variation? Mean the distinct groups are there. Body mass, this can be huge number of groups can be formed. Heartbeat rate, it can be vary to great extent. Height, it can vary to great extent many intermediate countless intermediates can be there now sickle cell anemia can be there that it can be wild type it can be heterozygous or it can be sickle cell anemic person so three uh, categories are only there so this is the discontinuous variation so c b and a they are all continuous variations answer for this question should be d okay in this question a farmer wants to produce extra large sweet oranges by selective breeding. Using information from the table, which plant type should the farmer select for breeding? Now you can see that the size range is 6 to 9, 9 to 12 and 12 to 15. So we are not supposed to select this one uh, very small size. So 3 is small size and 5 is small size. Okay, so we are not gonna select it. On the other hand, our preference is for this one's the largest size that is the 2 1 and with the maximum sugar that is uh, 3 and 4 but you know that the 3 has very small size fruit so we will reject this one so 2 and 4 can be selected although 4 has intermediate size but it has highest sugar on the other hand 2 has uh, largest size but intermediate sugar of amount okay so both of these character six they are means desirable one in case of five the small size is very small so we will not be selecting this one three is not selected because of small size one is not selected because uh, the size is intermediate and sugar is very uh, means uh, low contents are there so this is not selected 3 is not selected because of very small size 5 is not selected because of very small size then only 2 and 4 they are the ones which are having 2 is having very large size although little bit sugar 4 is having intermediate uh, size but very large amount of the sugar that is 20% sugar. So the answer to this question should be C mean the farmer will be selecting 2 and 4 for the purpose of selective breeding. So answer should be C for this.